from Time to Explore, uh, just out uh, finishing up a podcast and whatnot, and doing a little video shoot, uh, checking all the equipment and getting things charged up, etc., etc. That's been a, a minute, hasn't it? Let's get everybody caught up. What's going on with the old Explorer? Uh, well, let's do a quick little uh, update. What's going on with me? I was put off work on May 2nd uh, till September. Uh, basal joint arthritis in around the thumb and the index finger. Uh, this is all deteriorating. Deteriorating. Uh, trigger finger in the other three fingers, which is the sleeve and the tendons. The tendons get stuck. So when I go to grip tools and whatnot, my fingers actually lock. And they don't want to bend, they lock straight, and they feel like they're bent the opposite direction. The other morning, I uh, woke up, and I felt like my hand was like this, and then wrapped, and I slept like that. I woke up to excruciating pain. Uh, so, medication is working slowly. Uh, the CBD uh, that I take that I grow and make myself, that is working as well. Uh, the warm water massage for this, this hand. I have trigger finger in the left hand as well, and I'm left-handed, thankfully I can still do most tasks with my left hand, but when I'm working I'm pretty much ambidextrous. Uh, so, uh, it's getting pretty frustrating and with June being men's mental health month uh, nothing plays with your mind losing the ability of your hands and back legs whatever like the loss of the ability to do something and uh, it's been a struggle uh, I have a very positive minded wife that I am grateful for and she keeps me in line make sure you're not doing too much don't overdo it etc I don't think of it as nagging yeah there's some days I'm frustrated and want to get we all get an idea at the start of the day what we want to have done at the end of the day and when that doesn't happen it's all right but uh, I'm in uh, tinker or putter mode I go out do a little bit try not to overexert uh, my hands so ratcheting and pulling on on tools and whatnot uh, just can't do it anymore it it's an instant stop work uh, and that really gets the wheels going up here uh, we practice positive mindset uh, and we practice gratitude in our house and we are grateful and thankful for our health despite what's going on it could always be worse right so that being said a little update on the Explorer uh, it's getting a new paint I'm slowly picking away at uh, getting the uh, random camo on there and I want to thank everybody who's reached out and said they love the colors the base color of the Explorer is flat gray. It's not a primer. It's actual flat paint. Uh, so I started, I did the lower section of the doors, gloss black, with a, where I had the red vinyl striping previously. And the little recess in the door, that's gloss red, gloss fire red actually. And the random camo is just, I grabbed some masking tape and made a pattern all over the hood and then I grabbed a rattle can of gr flat gray, flat black, flat white and the fire red gloss and just picked a spot, gave it a quick sanding and sprayed it. Let that dry, started working down one side and then the other I uh, got the Time to Explore decal across the windshield in red and white. Red X with the white lettering. 
This morning uh, I did the uh, same lettering on the doors in the gloss black area. So white time to explore with a red X. Really the red and the white make the color combo just bam. I like it and I'm uh, I'm glad uh, it's being received. Uh, I'm glad other people like it. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, slowly getting the uh, Easter weekend. I've run into a few problems with the Explorer. The uh, lift gate was really giving me issues. And the lift gate above the window is actually higher than the roof line. And I've been struggling with trying to figure out what's causing it. Well, the body mounts where the lift gate closes had rotted away. Uh, and the little supports for the cargo floor had started to uh, rot, rust away. And the cargo floor had a little bit of a dip in the middle. And I said, all right, let's cut all the rust out. You can treat it like cancer. So I ended up cutting the majority of the cargo floor out and the support rails underneath, they were pretty much disintegrated. So I've got some angle iron that I've uh, put in, welded in on, a, on an angle from the center to the sides. And I want to give it a, another couple cross bracing for that because the extra weight uh, the rooftop tent's gone uh, a young couple have that now uh, I can now carry the canoe on the uh, Explorer with my aluminum bars and picked up the Apicool fridge the 50 liter so the whole once the floor is patched the uh, I'm in no hurry because I've got other things I want to get done. Uh, I would really like to get bumpers put on this year, but uh, being out on medical, uh, my income has been basically cut in half. So, yeah, no new toys, no new, no new big items. Uh, we're gonna make a platform inside, so I can still have the cubbies underneath like I had before in the slide out table which I really liked probably gonna go a bigger table wider and the fridge and auxiliary battery will sit behind the passenger side seat the rear seat's been deleted it's I still have it but it's not going back in uh, the blue eddy little power box will power the fridge and daisy chain from the auxiliary battery solar panels going back up on the roof so that can charge the auxiliary battery, the blue eddy, and anything else. So all my power needs I want from the auxiliary battery and the blue eddies. I have two of the little EB3As. Uh, I keep one in each vehicle that powers my camera gears. Uh, so that's going to be a section. And then I need to redo the kitchen box. I want to make a uh, slide out kind of like a pantry style that the stove and everything can once it's slid out it can drop down not still I gotta plan it out and uh, so there's some new stuff coming uh, sleep platform uh, I've got to make a handle to open the lift gate from the inside a little uh, pull uh, what else oh a barrier from the cargo air, the rear cargo space to the front cab I want to put a barrier across there so if for any reason things are not put in place and we need to stop suddenly nothing is going to come forward uh, was thinking of just like a dog dog crate dog fence or dog barrier but uh, I think I'm going to build something a little more uh, secure than that. The uh, windows in the back are all getting uh, tinted, uh, blocked out. Uh, side awning, 
with a screen room. It's probably going to be a winter project. I'm talking to Dan at uh, Flex 4 Off Road, out the other side of Fredericton. Uh, kicking the idea around, him and I are thinking about doing a solid axle swap on the Explorer. So that will give me uh, a little more clearance in the front. Get rid of those uh, torque arms. Uh, I want it kept simple and affordable to maintain. Uh, Explorer parts are inexpensive. I can get them anywhere. My current front stock setup, I can go to any part store, go online, and I can get the parts easily and quite inexpensive actually and I want to keep it that way uh, I've seen some solid axle swaps that have been nothing but a nightmare I trust the uh, dance been doing this a long time I trust his work I trust his knowledge he's a smart guy and with the 33 inch tires I'm going to have to re-gear it or buy stocks in uh, Irving Oil or something uh, and get a fuel discount. Uh, they are going to make it thirstier with the 373 gears, uh, but I knew that before I put them on. The uh, Pro Comp wheels have like a really good, I think it's a negative 29 or negative 35 offset. They don't rub anyway, whatever the offset is. And I, something like the offset. Oh, wheel centers and new uh, lug nuts are coming. Just picking away at little things while I uh, try to get some, uh, get my hand rehabilitated here. So a lot of stuff's going to get uh, farmed out, which I am not used to doing. I'm used to doing it all myself and I have a hard time with that and that's another thing that plays on my mind uh, on a constant basis the cost of paying someone else to do something when you know and have the tools that you can do it yourself uh, I'm fortunate I got uh, two stepsons that uh, are both mechanically inclined one's a diesel mechanic by trade and the other one is uh, auto body repair so and my father is a retired auto body repairman and I am, I guess I'm a retired motorcycle mechanic. So, no lack of knowledge kicking around here. But I just uh, can't get it in my head to pay somebody to do the work for me. So, if it takes me longer to do it, then that's what it does. That's what's going to happen. Uh, the old Explorer is almost at 290,000 kilometers. It is running like a top with the new coil and the new fuel pump. Uh, what else did I do to that? Coil? Oh, I got new plugs and wires going. On. I haven't put them in yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, tinkering on the old rig uh, keeps me positive that uh, the build is gone beyond my expectations. It's everything is better, turned out better than I thought it was going to. And when I started putting the the white and the and the red camel patterns on, it was just like, yes, this is what it needed. Uh, love it when projects come together like that. The uh, I like the size of the old rig. Like it's a 2000 Explorer XLT, it's base model, like it, you can't get any more basic. It has four low, four high, four liter uh, overhead valve engine, five speed transmission. So pretty, pretty uh, stable platform from Ford. And I even had uh, one of the parts guys at the local Toyota dealer, at first glance he thought it was an older Forerunner. And then I had to inform him it was a Ford Explorer, and he just, he just shook his head and walked away. He was lost for words. So, uh, yeah, podcast is back up and going. Uh, I just finished an episode. Uh, recording another one Wednesday night. 
So that's going to be what? 18, 19, 20, 20th, 21st. So, and then there's another episode being recorded uh, next weekend. There's a group that I was supposed to go with if the Explorer is going to be ready this weekend. Uh, soft roading group. There's a couple of lads from that that uh, want to jump on the podcast and talk about their uh, cool rigs. I'm not going to uh, spoil it, but uh, so yeah, ending June with uh, positive vibes and uh, getting the old Explorer back in back on the trail. So. I guess uh, I'm trying to say is uh, no matter what life throws at you, be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for everything you have. Like I can hardly hold a spoon in my hand. Uh, it's iffy when I hold a coffee. A warm coffee is great. It feels good in my hand. But uh, there's times where I have to set it down because I can't hold on to it constantly. Uh, I've always told Heather that we we are growing old together, and I want to be able to explore with her all over the world, and stroll with her holding her hand. And if this is all cramped up, and I can't hold her hand, then uh, that's my fault. So I have to look at uh, taking care of myself. And uh, today's Father's Day, so I want all the guys to. Uh, Be the best version of yourself that you can be. There's people that count on you. And you guys, see you in the next one.